for the ANSYS labs, is there a specific file type that you want submitted? Because I was uh, looking at it, it spits out a lot of different files. Um, I don't need your ANSYS file. Basically, I just want to end product, you know, the final report to which summarize your result. Yeah, I'm going to go through that right now. You know, today's agenda. Yes, I'm going to go through my expectation for all your labs and also your answers midterm that is due uh, next month, I can say. I haven't set it up yet. And also, I like to uh, review the uh, 2D elements lecture one more time. And your job is to uh, finish the uh, assignment number five. And at the same time, set up Excel spreadsheets to help you during the final exam. Okay, I see some chats. Uh, Japanese A5 value, what I think is what 200 pounds, 200 bucks a pound, something like that. Yeah, yeah, pretty well. <laughs> okay, I like to, um, okay, um, let's do let's do some work on a uh, 2D elements first, and then we'll go, we'll, we'll work on answers. Okay, I have just uploaded uh, assignment number five for, uh, in Ever to Learn. And this is a picture of the uh, assignment. This is like um, one of the in-class assignment that I, I had a few years back. I miss in-person lecture. This is what I did. You know, I just write a problem set on the board and our student to work on it. If they have questions, I provide feedback, instant feedback right away. Okay, there is a triangle, 2D elements, solid wedge, a quarter inch thick, 30 to the uh, times 10 to the six PSI, a quarter inch thick, pause on ratio is 0.3, and a thousand pounds weight is loaded on top of it. Okay, how much does the weight sink? Okay, uh, first of all, we plan the uh, FEA. How do I do that? We know right away this is a symmetric problem. Okay, so Sir, yes, yes. By What's that, up? By that question, you mean how much does point one move? Like, what's the displacement of point one? That's right, note one. Yes. Okay. How much the note one move? Okay, so <clears throat> yeah, that's part of the uh, FEA plan. First step, I named the note, note one, note two, and note three. Okay, and then I, I want to detect, uh, you want to use UFEA to detect the, the movement of note one. Okay. So I could, I could analyze the whole problem uh, without the symmetric boundary, symmetric boundary conditions. However, I like to have more zeros within uh, my 2D element. So when I set up the coordinate, I set up zero, zero at node two, and node one is a zero, 30, and node three is a 30, zero. And then I split that weight into half. So it end up like 500 pounds loading on a half of this uh, triangle wedge. Okay. And how do I do that? I go back to the, uh, to my note. Okay, I'm gonna skip the le lecture. I go straight to the previous example that I had. In the Excel spreadsheet, I set up the notes table. And then it will, from the Excel spreadsheet, calculate alpha one, 
alpha 2, alpha 3, beta 1, 2, 3, delta 1, 2, 3. Okay. All of this alpha, beta, delta is calculated by the coordinates of the triangle. And the detailed equations is in the lecture. Is in the lecture note. Yep, that's right. That's alpha, beta, delta. Okay. After this, we set up the strain displacement matrix by the alpha, beta, and delta. It's right here. And then with the constant elasticity, thickness, and Poisson ratio 0.3, we set up the uh, three, three, three by three matrix E. And then the, the, the stiffness matrix is the product, matrix product of D transpose E and D, which is a six by three, three by three, and three by six. Okay, and then I, I've got a few emails regarding um, how to do a uh, matrix multiplication in Excel. Um, there are many demonstrations uh, online in Google. You know, you, you may search it up, but you know, I, I, can, I can show you here. Okay, just for simplicity, I'm not going to do the constant right here, but I, I can uh, show you how, how it is done by a matrix of multiplication. Zero, negative 10, zero. Okay, right here, I'm typing the matrix D but you should set up a program in Excel. You, when you type in the uh, coordinate of the triangle, you get this uh, D matrix, E matrix automatically, okay? Zero, zero. Okay. Copy that right here. Transpose. Okay, let's call let's call this matrix D transpose. D D us. Okay. Now, just remember, I'm not doing the scale factor right here. There's a big, big numbers right beside this, but uh, I, I just want to show you how to multiply matrix. So I didn't do that, but uh, okay. The first step, I want to multiply the both. Uh, First step, I want to like multiply uh, the first two terms. Okay. Uh, this is a three by six, and this is a three by three. So the product will be
That's right, right here. So the product will be six, three by six. So I highlight this. This is the result. And then I type equal, okay? This is a matrix multiplication. So the function is called MM, M-M-U-L-T. You click on this. And then if it asks you to enter the first array and the second array. The first one will be the D transpose. And then comma. Second array will be the E matrix. Okay, and before you hit enter, this is very important. I cannot show you in the screen. You hold on to control shift and enter. Control shift enter. So that will give you the uh, product of D transpose times E. Okay, and then I put into uh, another box. Uh, e. Okay, and then the global matrix for D, T, E, T, like D transpose E times E, D will be a six by six matrix. So I highlight some six by six. Watch out, this is very important. You know, the, um, the size of the product, the size of the uh, final product should be uh, accurate, okay? So right here, same thing. I type equal MM, okay? The search result will be multiplications. And then first array will be this one. D transpose E, I type comma, and then I select the second array will be right here, D, okay? And then I close the brackets. And before you hit enter, very important, control shift, enter. Watch out, see how easy it is. This is the final product, the global matrix of the triangle elements. And of, of course, I didn't, I didn't do the scale factor. You know, you can uh, multiply that easily. And then uh, the, uh, oh, you can easily do the uh, calculations here. Um, okay, again, I'm not doing the uh, assignment for you, but I'm just repeating the uh, example with the Excel. Uh, the force, this is the UX, U3, V3. Okay, and then, oh, where's my Excel spreadsheet? No. Okay, right here, the force vector is zero, and then negative 5,000. And Right here, this is U3 and V3. Did I do it right? Let me see. Yep, that's right. And then there's a th zero. Okay. So now in in exam or whatever, um, I will ask you to show me your work, okay? Instead of copy the whole six by six, like 36 numbers, you may do a screen grab, okay? Or you just copy and paste this, copy this, and paste it into whatever format you want. Uh, let's say I carry on to my notes right here. Boom. Okay. Let's have a new. Yep. 
you may do this or you just do a screenshot top uh, Anyways, I think you got an idea, okay? Copy this, put, put in your work, work format, PowerPoint, and then you just, uh, select the two equations because um, because of the boundary conditions, we have a lot of zeros, right? So you only deal with the two equations we have here, okay? Uh, if you want, you can do the uh, inverse matrix, okay? This is another, another trick I, want, I can show you. Uh, let's call that inverse. Okay, um, we are dealing with a two, uh, only the last two equations because everything, everything else is zero. Oh. Yep. This is a six by six matrix, but because the first four rows are zero, so we're gonna, we're not, we, we're gonna ignore this for now, you no, know, because uh, unless you want to calculate the, uh, the forces at the top two nodes. Um, so we, we just inverse this square. Uh, okay, the inverse of two by two will be a two by two. So uh, the final size of the matrix will be, and then I type, uh, highlights final size of the matrix, then equal I N, I think it's the inverse. It'll be M inverse. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that's right. And then highlight this, enter, and then finally control shift, okay. And um, okay, the final product uh, will be inverse times force vector. Uh, that will be a uh, U three, V three. Matrix multiplication again. Oops. Wrong. Uh, the first array. Second array, control shift, enter. That's right. See, you got a U3 and V3. Obviously, this is a, this is a wrong. Uh, so this is not, not uh, very different from my note because uh, I didn't do the scale factor there. I didn't multiply the, the scale factor. So, but basically you got idea, you know, and so you see, you, you may use Excel to help you for to work on 2D elements. Okay, anyways, try on your quiz, uh, I mean, assignment five, you know, and if you have questions, we'll go through that in future. Do you have any questions on 2D elements before I go, go uh, what we, before we uh, talk about answers? Just a quick question. Um... When you did the last step, the inverse of K to solve for U3, 
U3 and V3, is that the, the case to solving any, any of the unknowns? You just inverse, take the inverse of that and then uh, multiply that by the force vector or the known values? Mm, selectively, you select the, uh, only the, uh, the equations, which is related to the, uh, like, okay, now, if this is a simple case right here, right? Because um, the force factor is a zero, 5,000. What if uh, you have something very different, like uh, F is an unknown. Over there, we have something that we know. And then right here, this is a unknown to but right here is a known force. Okay, this is just an example. If you have something like that, like a, this is not not a when it's not a straightforward uh, inverse matrix modifications, then you cannot do that. If you see this is a clean force factor on the side on the left side and two clean unknown on the right side yes you may do the inverse uh, by may by uh, by excel did i answer your questions you know you, you you may use it but you use it carefully okay. and as long, as long as you screen screen grab everything screenshot the uh, the approach in your exam or test, you know, I, I will credit. I'll give you credit for it. Can we do this assignment in Excel? Yes, please. I encourage you to do the 2D element assignment in Excel. And if you feel comfortable with that approach, you may do your any assignment in Excel, but as long as you show me the work, because I you, you cannot just show me one final number for the whole for the whole question. Say eh? I, I have to evaluate every step. So ju you just why use inverse case? Because you have okay, remember hmm. Why use inverse K? You ask me this question, you kind of hurt me a bit, but I will, I have a lot of patience. I'll go through that for you. This is the known values and this is a known and this is unknown okay so what is it again to zero negative five thousand pound and the k we have a uh Four known numbers, but U three and U, uh, sorry, U three and V three. Okay, so we have we need to uh, move that over to calculate U three. K inverse times. You only use this <clears throat> equations when you have a clean uh, known force factor and two unknown uh, displacement, displacement values. 
then you may use the inverse equations. Questions? Okay, so I want you to try on uh, assignment number five uh, and it worth something, you know, it's worth uh, one, one of the quiz, you know. If you, <clears throat> try it, if you have questions, let me know, okay. And um, watch this right here. The, uh, using the uh, shape function, the SI, S, S1, S2, and S3, my Excel isn't showing the correct result. Well, because <clears throat> my Excel is not showing me the uh, ex, uh, correct result either. Why? Because I did not do the scale factor, remember? There's a bunch of numbers right in front of it, right here. In my Excel spreadsheet, I do the calculation for D, E, and D only, you know, the order or the scale factor, I haven't, I haven't do it. Can you show the formula once more? I, hmm. You mean Excel spreadsheet? The seven five due day, the last one. Okay, how about this? Uh, you, there are many videos on um, matrix modification uh, in YouTube or online, you know, look it up, practice. And then uh, if you have questions, send me email. And worst case, worst case, you, know, you may do hand tell, but it's gonna take so much longer. Three, six by three, three by three, and then six by three again. You know, try it out. You know, uh, the formula won't show you much. You know, you, okay. If you want, I can. That's the formula. Anyways, do your Excel spreadsheet on your own, you know, and try to debug it. You know, if you have problems, send me an email or watch some videos online. You know, it's not too complicated. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, let's take a break from the. Uh, theory and let's talk about answers. Okay, first of all, do you have issues with uh, downloading the answers, install it and work on the problem set? I believe all the instructions are very straightforward and you have uh, different videos to assist you. Okay, got it now? Yeah, you <clears throat> keep practicing Excel, you know, it is a very useful tool, um, not only for school, at work as well. It's, just, it's the cheapest software. Well, usually the company pay for it. It's not cheap to buy it yourself, but usually company pay for it. And then it is a straightforward tool and it helps you to do all the calculations repeatedly, you know. Okay, let's go back to answers. Okay, there's a folder for answers related items, answers setup guide and a... Okay, um, for the licensing, make sure you use answers enterprise, something, something like that, answers enterprise. And then 
you you won't see academic teaching in the introductory anymore. And for working directory, make sure you get a folder that you can find all the fi working files, okay? And uh, when you hand in your report, I don't need your answers uh, file, but what I need from your report will be Okay, each report must have a, a title page. Tell me your name. Who am I? Who's, who is this, um, who is this uh, report for? And then it's a brief summary of what's going on in your assignment. What do you do? And then, there will be a, there should be introductions of uh, of the problem. I believe that the first assignment is a simple beam analysis, right? Just briefly tell me what's going on. The, you don't have to tell me the detail, like a twenty kilo newtons applied on the uh, on the on the beam. You just say there's a beam being support. And then uh, my job is to calculate the deflections and stress on it. Now, model description, this is a, the next session is more important. You have to identify the mesh and type, what, what, what elements you use. Use that. Use that report requirement as a as a guideline. Use that as a, a checklist. Okay. After you write a report, you come you come back to that requirement and say, hmm, do I have the abstract? Yes. Do I have the introduction? Check. Did I mention the elements and shapes and uh, notes that we use? Check. Now the presentation, the result. Um, I like to uh, see some pictures of your answers. Uh, that's the answers work. And you may do that in the control plot. Plot control, I'll show, I'll show you later. Okay, the presentation will be sold. You know, the displacement vector, you know. Okay, remember, answers is like a calculator. It doesn't have units. You have to specify the units for me. Okay, don't tell me the answer is a 34. Yeah, 34 what? 34 inches, meters, okay. Same as all the quizzes, midterm, you know, the unit is so important. Analysis of the result, you know, the FEA's allowable stress, you know, conclusions, final conclusions. I provide some more guidelines on how to, uh, yeah, that's right, right here. Under the, uh, general post processing uh, tab, there are many, many choices for you to select. Try, try each of them and see what you get. And then you just screenshot that plot and put in the report. Of course, talk about it. Don't just give me the pictures. And then, hey, here's a report. What is this? You know, what are the arrows? What else did I? Um, anyways, the the key to success for answers is don't be afraid and try it out. And uh, because of the uh, midterm, I delayed the uh, deadline for lab one. Okay, 
So now you have less work on theory now. So you should focus, well, except, except the, uh, I asked you to work on a Excel, Excel file for 2D elements. Everything, you, you may take a break from theory right now and work on the answers because you, you owe me some report, lab report. Lab one do okay. Let's let's go through what it do day for the assignments. Lab one the due date is. Oops. That one the due date is 21st. Because if I push that to next week, it's colliding with lab two. So I like to separate it a bit, June 21st. Is this report format for lab one? Okay, the, the report requirements is for all labs, for every, everyone. Okay, the first one is all, the first lab will be, it takes a bit longer because um, you, you have to set up everything from scratch, okay? Once you set up your own template, lab two, lab three, four, and even your answers midterm, you use it in the same format. And then when I evaluate you, I'll tell you what you missed and you can revise your report format as you go on. So that's why it's very important for you to set up the lab one, and then I provide some feedback and you improve as you go along, right? Can you resubmit that one? Yeah, I, I think I allowed you to do so, right? Only most submissions, submissions kept. Yeah. I haven't evaluated any labs yet. You may resubmit that and uh, your due date is uh, June 21st. I have uploaded uh, lab two as well. Okay, and the due date is uh, June 28th. And let me see the condition it's, yep. You are allowed to submit one file and only the most recent submission is capped. So lab one has a beam analysis and the trust analysis. Um, do we need separate title pages and separate introductions for both of them or are they combined? Please combine them. You know, the title page is uh, just, just say just a lab one, which consists of the two, two questions. Okay, you may say that in a title, you know, lab one, simple beam analysis and trust analysis. And in abstract, you say, okay, in this assignment, it includes two problems, two final elements model, and you so on and so forth. You know. Okay, any more questions on 2D elements and answers? Today's class is kind of short, you know, I have nothing else to teach you now. Okay, a lot of independent studies. And I can tell you from now until the end of course, you have one more lecture on the theory, which is the uh, model and uh, modal analysis and thermal analysis. Okay, I will pick a date to go through that with you. I'm just planning um, because there will be a lot of uh, labs coming, uh, coming up. I like to let you 
take a break next week. So there will be no class on next Saturday. Okay, so you can focus on the answers and focus on your 2D Elements Excel. Okay, and I need some time off to mark on your midterm exam as well. Okay, and we will see, we will have another meeting two weeks from now. Okay, is that good? Yeah, that's good. Okay, and um, do you have any more questions on answers or 2D when? elements? Yep, what is it? Uh, when when is the uh, the quiz five due or the uh, assignment five due? The one for the 2D element. The 28th. Uh, oh, I don't see it. Uh, oh. Uh, You just updated, right? Maybe yep. like that's right. Oh, I, that's why like, I like I didn't see it before. Okay. Never mind. Yeah, I modify the assignment folder quite often. So, so this is Friday. It means this is Friday, right? Correct. Yeah. But uh seriously, you know that that assignment shouldn't take too long. Okay. If you have a good Excel spreadsheet less than half an hour you're done i will clean up that folder a bit you know all the past assignment quizzes you know i might hide it so uh, yeah okay so any more questions on today's lecture, no. I can't Class. actually. I can't actually see assignment five. Has it yeah, been released neither. into the assignment? Um... Yeah, same here. Because every time you referred to assignment five, I was assuming you just meant like lab one. But there's lab one and assignment five. But I can't see assignment five yet in the assignments. Um... Oh my God, that's my fault. Yeah, I don't see it. Okay, visibility, yes, save and close. You should have it now. Yes, it's there now. Okay, sorry guys, my fault. I'll clean up a bit, you know, clean this up a bit. Okay, and So any more questions? I have a question regarding answers. Um, you said you needed, you wanted it submitted in uh, which type of file? Was it Excel or in a PDF? A PDF, please. Yep. Okay. PDF, please. But sir, you just want to see like certain pieces out of the PDF, right? Like the shear force diagram or the bending moments and stuff like that. You don't need to see the whole the whole ANSI's file, correct? No, I don't need it, yeah. Okay, so just certain outputs out of it. Correct, yes. I trust you on that, because you, know, you are the major driver of the answers. Okay, and just uh, show me the plot, you know, and just go go with the uh, report requirement guidelines that I we talked about earlier. Because in, in a report requirement, I didn't ask you to upload the uh, answers file on it. You know. Professor, I have a question regarding midterm. Can we go on a breakout room, maybe? Sure, I can. I can stick around for to answer questions. Okay, but for now, let me stop recording first.